in the workshop, some early Christmas shopping and gas firing my kingdom boiler. And I know it's only November 2017, but I needed some parts. And the first parts that I bought were some 5BA grub screws with Allen heads. These are quite difficult to get hold of. And thanks to a viewer who sent me a link, I found some on eBay. And these immediately go into my box of Allen grub screws. And the next thing on my Christmas list was some 5BA bolts. And these are very useful because they have a smaller head size. I also bought a pack of 5BA brass nuts. I generally use brass nuts with steel bolts in steam engine applications. And then I bought some of these. And these really are useful things to have in your workshop. I got these from Blackgates Engineering. I did buy a similar set a few weeks ago. Except these are different. The open ends are cranked over to the left. Or the right if you turn them round. And this is a very useful feature because you can get at nuts and bolts in very confined spaces. When I showed the first set of these that I bought, an expert viewer made a comment. He basically implied that these were no good and they weren't hard enough and I should buy nothing but chrome vanadium spanners. Well, I've got some of those and they're okay, but they're not as good as these for certain applications. These sets of spanners are really cheap. You get the full set for the price of one chrome vanadium small spanner. And the steel they're made out of is more than hard enough for the manipulation of small BA nuts and bolts. There now follows a short interlude while I give my 5A steam engine a quick run on compressed air. The air test was stopped by two things, the compressor ran out of air and the postman knocked on the workshop door. And he gave me this box. And when I opened the box, this is what was inside. I bought these parts from forestclassics.co.uk. The address is on screen. And the first item is a Bix gas burner. And the next item are some more of these excellent cast elbows from PM Research. And these are some pipe couplings, also from PM Research. But these are supposed to be cast. But unfortunately, Phil at Forest Classics said that even though on the website they're shown as cast items, PM Research are currently sending these out. But that's no good for me because I can make these threaded brass sleeves very easily on the lathe in minutes. So I'm sending these back. And the other thing that I bought is a piece of pipe. Now I know I can make this as well, but I thought just for a change I would buy one. The 5 16 diameter brass bit at the end is threaded to take a gas jet, and at the other end of the pipe is a quarter by 32 fitting, which allows connection to a commercial valve that fits on a gas tank. Before using these Bix burners, I would recommend that you thoroughly read the instructions. I've always found the position of the gas jet on these burners to be critical. If you get it wrong, the gas can blow back to underneath the ceramic and cremate it. So please read the instructions if you're going to get one of these. I'll turn out the lights so you can see it. This gas pressure is very low by the way, there's only a tiny bit of gas left in the tank. I thought I would take this opportunity to see how it went on firing this boiler. This is a small coal fired boiler that I put together a while back and I made a fire grate for it and did a steam test on coal and it's very successful. But sometimes it's just convenient to be able to run it on gas because I can't run it indoors on coal. Well, I shouldn't really run it indoors on gas, but my workshop's very well ventilated. And I also have a carbon monoxide detector just over the bench. In this clip, I'm filling the boiler with some water. Quite a few viewers seem to think it's necessary to tell me what kind of water to use these days. I sort of give in on this. This is water from the tap. I live in what's called a soft water area, so I don't have a real lime scale problem, although it's not as good as it used to be. One viewer suggested that I should use water from the condenser tank in my tumble dryer. And other people recommend distilled water and all sorts of weird and wonderful sources of water. Well, I use the tap in the kitchen. I go into the kitchen with this plastic container, fill it from the tap, then I take the container of water into the workshop and fill the boiler like this, using a funnel. And this seems to work for me. I don't get a lot of lime scale deposit in the boilers. But here's a useful tip. If I store a boiler for a long while, in the workshop of course, and that's warm, it's not going to freeze, I would either blow the boiler down first to get rid of all the water from within the boiler, or I will fill it with water right to the top so there's no air in there just like I would do for a hydraulic test, and this seems to stop the formation of lime scale that usually blocks up all the fittings. Well, it works for me anyway. For this very quick steam test, because I don't have much gas in the gas canister, 
I've only filled the boiler to about halfway, and after re-tightening the safety valve, I light the gas burner. I need to raise the height of the gas burner slightly so that it centralises in the firebox. Otherwise this happens as I move the burner out of position. I think I've got the gas jet setting about right. It's quite difficult to see it on the bench under the bright video lights, but once it's in the firebox you can see the small blue triangles, which I believe is how it's meant to be set. What I'll probably do is fit a metal plate to the bottom of the burner. For now though, I've just put a piece of plate underneath and it lifts the burner just enough to keep it in position in the firebox. You have to be careful when lighting gas-fired boilers because they do this. And it looks a lot better in slow motion. As I said at the beginning of this test, this is a coal-fired boiler with a fire hole door that it doesn't really need if it's been gas-fired. The combination of this small boiler and the quite large burner is good because in no time at all there is some pressure in the boiler. There's not much pressure, and I'm not going to bother taking it up to working pressure anyway, but there's enough to operate the steam blower. And when I open the steam blower valve, this directs a jet of steam up the chimney, which would normally draw the coal fire. You don't really need a blower with a gas-fired boiler, but if you just crack the blower slightly, it can help with the combustion of the gas. The other valve here on the top of the boiler is the main steam valve, and as you can see, we have some steam. Not very much and there's nothing showing on the gauge, but that was not the purpose of this test anyway. I much prefer this boiler being fired with coal, but it really is inconvenient sometimes. And also, you have to watch it like a hawk. If the water level in the boiler gets too low, you have a problem if you're coal firing. With gas, you just turn the gas off. And I've turned the gas off anyway, and I'm disconnecting the jet. I intend to finish this steam plant in the not too distant future. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.